Hi uh, guys, welcome back to the Physics Central. Today I'm gonna be teaching you how to create a table on PHP my admin using my SQLI or SQL language and then we are trying to um, save the data that we gather from the table to our database. But before anything else, please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to get updated whenever we post new videos like this. So let's go ahead and check whether we have a certain table in our phpMyAdmin. Alright, so my phpMyAdmin is here and uh, what I'm going to do is to create a table. Alright, so there are instance, instances where you need to create a table right away by clicking this one, create a table. So there's nothing wrong with that. However, if you have so many rows to create, that's a problem because you're going to type it one by one and then do the specification uh, on uh, this uh, process. However, if you want to do it uh, in one um, piece of code, then put that SQL right here. I think that's uh, much better because you can specify the name of the um, column and the name of the row that you want. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, um, go to the Visual Studio code and drag the codes that we have prepared. Alright, so the table that we are going to create must be able to hold this large amount of data. Alright, so there's, uh, for example, the scheduler or the client wants to set on a schedule because this is, uh, this is the um, HTML of um, this uh, particular document all right so say that the client wants to um, set a schedule all right so this number of data will be input to our PHP and then to our database so we are going to create one uh, container let's say for that um, or yeah to, um, what do you call this all right okay all right so this one certain column yeah for each data all right so let's go ahead and uh, you see that there are so many of them so I just get this one and just copy all of the names and then put it in one uh, uh, in a proper manner and a proper order because when in inserting the data that is uh, important or the arrangement of the columns and the values must be uh, the same all right so this is my sql code all right so i'm gonna use the sql language for this and then here it goes so you are going to create a table and then the name of the particular table and uh, well the columns i say yeah so the name uh, the, the id of the person which will be integer all right so when you say integer that is in a whole number from uh, zero to uh, infinity all right but there's a limit i think that's an 11 digit value and then uh, I do not know what happens after that all right so last name would be uh, since it's a name it would be a character a letter yeah I do not know if uh, yeah so it's a bar car then uh, yeah so this goes on and on until you have listed every um, column that you like all right so I'm telling you that there, there are 119 of them. All right. So total of yeah, not including the spaces, but there are 119 of them. So I'm gonna copy this and then go to your uh, PHP my admin and then uh, an SQL and then fix it there. All right. So here. So we're going to paste it here and once we hit go somewhere here we, we should be able to get to create a certain um, database all right a certain table all right so let's uh, 
delete this and then paste all right there we go so we have pasted it okay, so i think that's fine and then hit go so um yeah i wish that uh, we do not have type anything wrong because if there's something wrong this action cannot proceed all right so i hit that and then just wait for a moment and then see whether this can be created all right so my sql returned an empty result okay so let's see all right so here is the table named my schedule so we can go ahead and check that all right once we click that yeah so it has um uh, we call this an empty right this table is empty now we need a value for this all right so we go ahead and uh get the values so how, how can we get the value we are going to use php all right so we go back to our codes and connect the database and uh um well the html to the database using php all right so we go ahead and uh, go back to uh, the source code where we, we get that uh, uh where we do the connection all right okay so at the bottom of this document so at the bottom of this document you will see the declaration that this is um php and then the top would be uh, html so i'll just hide this because um i think scrolling down is not uh, wise <laughs> all right so i'm gonna hide it then hide it and then hide things and then, uh, uh, because there's nothing wrong with that so we can go and uh, ignore them for a while <laughs> yeah so we are going to focus in the php all right so here i declared some values for simplicity purposes because um i haven't uh, made any field for this yet we're in the um, music uh, is able to type all right so but if I have made some database I think I, I can just go uh, the data and then uh, put it right here or you know join them together <laughs> all right so if they submit something we were able to get a value either one or zero and it will be stored in this variable so the code goes on and uh, on and on until we reach the last checkbox that's supposed to have a certain value now if that process is done what we need to do is to connect it to the database so we need the connection so in connecting a database you have to actually declare the server name which is in our case it's the local host all right which you can get actually if you download SAMP or ramp all right so but samp is a lot um, friendly user friendly so i use samp and then we're going to use the username actually in one of our videos we showed you how to get all of this uh, um, data all right so but if you don't know you can go ahead and uh, see where uh, i'm gonna explain to you where we get that all right so um I think on users, okay, so account, blah, blah, so let's see, uh -huh, so server, alright, so here, user and accounts, alright, um, Alright, so something is wrong with my uh, setup, so maybe next time I'll be uh, fixing this. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's say for example we were able to know our server name, username, password, and beginning. And in our case it will be local host root, alright, and then the password is none, and then the DB name, wherein we want to input the, the data is my yyt uh, it's named my yyt and then you are going to establish a connection 
All right, so we're going to use a handler, which is uh, in my case, I uh, use uh, a common. All right, so I just copy this. So this is sometimes called DDH. All right, or a connection handler, which should contain uh, the name of the server or the server name, username, and password, and then the DB name. And then we are going to um, use um, a MySQL I kill for an um, function, all right? I don't know if they call this a function. And then you my MySQL I may mean to link um, our database in our PHP. And then, then we wanted to create a connection. So if uh, we were able to connect and there's no error, all right? or it does not connect all right so means to say that the connection failed all right so we are going to initiate a uh, command on an error handling that tells us the error so that is uh, in the dive function this one all right you can copy that and then uh, close the arguments all right and then close the tag all right and then we go back to the PHP code. So in here, uh, for simplicity purposes, I told you that um, I assign a certain um, uh, a certain uh, data. Yeah, that's myself. So my uh, it will actually take ID number one, and then my name is Ed, and then I am my surname is Angeles. I live in Sabang and then the city is wrong. And then I'm gonna ask um, the document. Alright. I'm gonna let PHP to, to check whether the submit button is clicked or is set. So if it is set, this uh, codes will um, run. Alright. So this code tells you that if a certain checkbox is checked and then we want to get the data and then pass it on in here so to this variable and if it's not set we will still assign a certain data which is zero to this variable so that it will be defined all right so that's the solution to the undefined variable and undefined um array key all right so that we have talked in the previous video if you haven't visit that video yet please uh, check the description box below so that you will be able to learn how to solve that kind of problem all right we go ahead and uh, suppose suppose um, let's say that all of these things are in place and are working and we were able to assign a certain value whether uh, or not the user check on the checkbox all right so yeah this is a long code because there are thousands of them <laughs> all right so you have to do it one by one to make sure that there will be no error so let's say that we were able to get the data that we want and it's now uh, inside this uh, um, variable we want to establish the connection so we use the include function so include the document all right so what document we want to include that is the connection php which is this one now we go back and then check the connection all right so actually the, the there are two uh things because on inside there is also uh um what do you call this we try to connect all right so at first if there will be error so this php will run so we will be able to check that if uh, something is wrong in, in uh, this document it will pop up all right so the next thing is we wanted to insert the data that we get from the phone to our database and then we are going to use the sql function all right this one so we, we uh, use a variable for that which is SQL, dollar SQL, and then the code which is insert into, all right? So these are uh, SQL codes actually, the one that you see um, 
on the PHP my admin. Alright, so what table we wanted to modify so that is my uh, my SCD. Alright, and then these are the name of the columns. Alright, so the value must be uh, in um, in order. Alright, because if, it, if they are not in order, some data will be placed on the data. Alright, uh, uh, on other field. Okay, so, say for example, we want to execute this command. Yep, so, and then we are going to use the query. Okay, because that is a query, alright? So, this query this query will run the SQL all right so if it's true that um, it was able uh, to put okay to save the value on the date on the database all right so it will write or it will, it will project all right so echo new record is created successfully and if not all right if not if something is wrong let's say for example uh, a wrong spelling, an undefined variable, cause the trouble, it will be uh, projected in here. Alright, so echo error, so what type of error caused it? So, referring to um, the SQL statement here, and then, uh, yeah, so what's the reason? And then finally, you have to close the database, so that no one can actually hack it. So yeah, so that's the that's how the process goes. I hope you learned something about that or from that. Then let's go ahead and check whether we can uh, um, we can save a data. All right. So for the meantime, I'm uh, what I want to do is to disable the JavaScript. All right. So we will disable the JavaScript for the meantime. Okay. So yeah, somewhere here. Alright, so this one. So that we can see all the fields because it's easier because the, the fields are um there are hundred of them. So it's easier to see the data which are on the very top of the document so i wanted to see that because if the javascript is going so it is working i mean we will not be able to see some data because it is hidden according to time all right so we go to the document and check whether we can see or use all right if this is uh working all right so i'm going to refresh all right so you see that the display changes because that is being controlled by javascript as i've told you and then you see an error okay so right um i think something is wrong and uh, later on i'll be looking for that <laughs> and for the meantime let's see what happened if we actually check on this all right so let's say for example i'm uh, creating a schedule all right and later on we are going to try to browse the database if a data is created or not all right so let's go and uh, let's say for example i have checked all of this uh, things in the first row or column and this one this one this one and yeah, so I'd like to be uh, to attend the tutorial um, during this hours. All right, so let's go ahead and click submit. Okay, so it says that there is a new record created successfully, or so maybe um, the cause of the error a while back is. Um, Uh, yeah, so maybe I just need to create a hidden field for that. All right? So that's the last resort to create a hidden field that will actually put things on. <laughs> Alright, so 
uh, let's browse now. Let's browse the database and see whether a new record is created or not. So I'm gonna click on my YYT and then just loading so this one. Okay. Wait. And then there we go. So yeah, we were able to save the data. It's this, this is the data. All right. So and then on the next video, okay, I mean we will try to pull out the data coming from a database, and then so that the user can uh, view. But do not access all right view or gain access something like that so we want to get give the user the power to see the, uh, the what they have uh, the schedule that they have set and then try to change it in a way possible so that um yeah so some 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 kind of things like that so i hope guys that you were able to learn something out of this tutorial in uh, form handling and this is very useful right so um well we will uh, um i'll try to do my best to look for a solution in the particular area that you see a while back so that i can help you when um that kind of error pops up all right so bye bye guys so subscribe and hit the notification bell to get updated in uh well coding tutorial like this bye bye